All right, this is board game officer. So I figured I'd do a little video this time. I don't know. We'll see if it works. I figured I'm going to be talking a lot on this one. So maybe it might be better if you see a face. I don't know. Maybe you don't like to see my face. I don't know. But well, I figured we'll try this time. So as you can see, we're, I'm going to kind of go over the differences between the 1.0 version and the 1.5 version. However, I'm going to start off with a nice little caveat here, meaning this is just going from the print and play stuff, not from the final print. Uh, however, there's probably very, very minor changes from this version to the final print version. So I'm going to say 90, 95% correct here with everything I say here. Given, you know, do know that maybe some things have changed here or there. But this will at least give you the idea of the differences. Um, I'm going to go through the monsters, the different equipment, when we get them, how we get them, um, a couple of the different rule changes, then even some of the door changes and how they're different, some of the monsters, or not the monsters, the some of the pets, how they're different. I'm going to just try to go over as much as I can. So you can kind of tell the difference between the 1.0 and 1.5. Overall, there's really not a whole lot of difference in the rule aspect. Um, however, in the difficulty and story, there's significantly different, um, which is actually a good thing, I think. So what we're going to do here is we're going to first start off with the monsters here. On average, the health has increased by three points. So I have them all laid out here. Bottom is the old, top is the new. So we have the old Skeleton Archer Rookie that had six health, three damage, range one, multi-shot two, and poison two. And now they have nine health, three damage, multi-shot two, and poison one. And range one is just given because they have a ranged attack. And they're actually immune to bleed instead of bleed and poison. As you can see, um, health increased by three. Other than that, it's they're pretty darn similar. However, the new one also has a flip side, has an alternate side, which actually only has six damage or six health for him, but now he has Bloodseeker and Burn one and actually does four damage. As you can see, that's very different. Being the alternate side, I love it. I love the difference that it gives to it. So you might have skeleton archer, you know, three different rooms. You can at least have two different skeleton archers that you're facing. So it's a little less redundant. Same thing here with the fighter, right? Eight health and 12 health. So actually four extra health there. And then once again, on the flip side, once again, just nice having an alternate. The Shadow Cultist not only has the standard and alternate, they also have a flip one, meaning this card will flip after it activates. I actually really, this is probably one of my favorite things, because then not only are the, it's different between turns. All right, so one turn, he's going to do attack four, with health of nine, and then the next turn, he's just going to up to two weakest monsters, heal three. Blue meaning anywhere, but he's not going to attack, he's just going to heal. And then the next turn, he'll flip back over and attack again. Super, super cool. So you have three, basically the standard, the alternate, or the flip one. I'm going to note on here, this is going to be one of the differences from this print and play here on TTS is that should after that semicolon there after fatigue one, then as a semicolon, it, there should be a flip after that, which is not on this version, right? Meaning after you activate him, that activate tells you to flip. And then same thing on this side, there should be a flip sign there. Just tell you to flip over again. I think that's what they did. Correct me if I'm wrong, if they just expect you to know because it has side A up there where it's a Shadow Cultist Rookie, side A. So you're just supposed to know that you're supposed to flip it. I don't know. Uh, let me know if I'm wrong if or not, if there should be a flip there. 
But comparing it from the old one, right, we've got six health, three multi shot, two curse, one. And to, to that, actually quite a bit different. Four damage now, burn one and curse one, and nine health. Once again, you got three health increase from six to nine. Fighter, same idea, right? Just a little bit stronger on all sides. Once again, I, I'm not going to go through each individual one, but just to kind of show you, right? 8 health, 12 health, so that went up by 4. 10 health, 16 health, so execution actually went up by 6. Uh, 8 health, 12 health went up by 4. 10 health, 16 health, once again went up by 6. And damage is actually pretty similar with all of these. So as you can tell, it's mainly just that health has gone up, which is kind of good because when we were playing before, it was pretty regular to one shot. Some of these lower monsters with only six health, right? They're pretty easy to kill within one hit, one or two hits. So having that extra health really changes a lot because that means they're going to attack a few more times. Then once again, the gray monster, Rotten Flesh, has the rookie and alternate, and then. Uh, has the rookie, standard, and alternate, and then also a flip one. And then, as you can see, once again, 8 to 12, 10 to 16. So they went up 3, 4, 6 health. They got way stronger in health wise. Damage looks pretty darn similar still. And this one's one less, but it could be attacks twice instead of cleaving two. So, still a lot more difficult, because basically he's doing 6 damage instead of 4, more or less. And then the black monsters went from 12 to 13, 15, 3, 16 to 20, went up 4. Um, once again, damage is about the same, movement's about the same. And then the Shadow Knight lasts off here. It's got the rookie standard alternate, and then this one has the flip as well. Once again, damage is pretty similar, and but health is up by five on that one. Actually, only up by two on this one. However, he strike one, burn one, and fatigue. So that's standard is also fifteen. Right, it's a lot more variety, a lot more variety, which is super nice. And then fourteen to twenty. Once again, going up by six. So as you can see here. There's one in each level, you know, white, gray, or black monster that has this extra flip card. So out of the white monsters, it's the Shadow Cultist, the gray monsters, the Rotten Flesh, and the black monsters, the Shadow Knight. That has the extra flip um, variety, basically. And there, it won't, in the rules, it won't tell you which one to spawn. It will just tell you to spawn one. And you could at random, you know, you could shuffle them up and just pick one. You can keep it if you want, like, oh, we did this one last time. We could do this one next time. You know, keep a track of how you're doing it that way. You know, just pretty much anything, any way to keep track or just make it super random and just draw them from a card. A deck, you know, shuffle up, put something on top so you can't see because they are double-sided. And so you could just draw them ra randomly. The last thing I want to talk about with the uh, monsters is before they would only attack the strongest hero, right? No matter who, what, when, how, why, they would attack the strongest hero. Now, there's a lot of different ways they can attack you. So if you look on a lot of these, anything in blue is who they attack. If there is nothing in blue, they will attack normally the strongest hero. Bloodseeker is attacking the least amount of health. Relentless is the least amount of action cubes available, right? So that could change every time. Instead of just least amount of health, the one with the least amount of action cubes available on their thing. Then we have uh, Covetous, which is the most r available resource tokens. However many resource tokens, meaning shields, focus, or any other type of resource token that they might have. So the most resource tokens anyone has is Covetous. Then you have Defiant, which means the most available action cubes. Oh, so Relentless is least amount of action cubes. Defiant is most available action cubes. Um, so a couple other ones is 
Reckoner, ones that have Reckoner, which is the most amount of curse cubes on a player board. There's one called Slaughter, which means it actually goes off the NPC. Not the pets, just the NPC. There's one called Vicious, meaning that its damage is non-preventable. And then there's actually, a, they've added a whole lot of new terms that can attribute to both heroes and enemies. I'm not going to go through those because there's a lot. They're random, but they're just in the end of the rule book in terms. But they have added a lot of those, which is fun. Um, means that they do different stuff, do a lot of different things. Um, but now it's really... Before is okay, if you got down to low health, it's like, all right, if I just stay back a little bit more, I'm fine because they're going to attack the strongest hero. Now you get like the Skeleton Archer there that's got Bloodseeker or Defiant, so they're attacking the one with the least amount of action cubes, right? Now it's like, ah, you've got to look at everything to see who they're going to attack, what's going to happen. It makes it a lot more interesting, and I really enjoyed that variety as well. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the Commanders. So the commanders are going to be significantly different. Um, here's the old one. I don't know why that's going all sideways there. So he had 10x, where x was the amount of players that you're having. So basically what they did here is they did the health as 8r. And r is going to come from a a formula that's given on the door and or spawning instructions of how to do it. Basically, I have an example here, right here, one commander, CP means like, here's the, I don't know what it's, what CP stands for right now. CP is going to equal two plus P. So you have two, that's gonna be the given number on the door, plus P, which is the amount of players. So if you're playing with, let's say, three players, that's going to be 2 plus P. P is 3. So that's going to be 5. And then you take that 5 and you times it by that. So that R basically is that 5. And you times that 5 by 8, meaning his health is going to be 40. So that's way more, right? If you're playing with three people here, his health would be 30. But now with this different change here, 8 is going to go up to actually 40 damage, 40 health, sorry. Now the reason for this, it, it is a, a little bit more complicated. However, I think it's for a good reason. Because in the old one, if you were to find this commander on, let's say, chapter 3, you have this commander, his health would be 30, he would do 5 damage, right? Poison 2, push X plus 1, right? That's what he would do on level, on chapter 3. If you had another commander at chapter 16, he would be exactly the same. He'd be 30 health, do 5 damage, poison 2, and push X plus 1. Right? So he, he himself didn't really get harder. They would maybe add a couple more monsters or stuff, but he himself would not get any stronger. So now, with this new, little bit more complex formula, all they have to do is change this number on the spawning instructions. Meaning... That, you know, chapter 3 is going to be a 2 plus P. However, in chapter 16, that might be a 4 plus P. Right? So if you have 7 players, or oh, sorry, 7 players. If you have 3 players again, but it's 4 plus 3, that's 7. 7 times 8 is 56. So that means you're seeing the exact same monster, or exact same commander, and later, now he has 56 health instead of the 40, right? So the, you can kind of make it harder later down the road, which I really actually kind of like that. Now, the other thing that they have added is the commander attack cards. So I believe there's only 10 attack cards that actually in the box as well. There might be a handful more. However, what you're going to do is you're just going to shuffle these, all these cards up. Like that, you shuffle them, and you are going to draw as many as there are players. So if once again, if there's three players, you draw three, and you place these on the initiative track. And so once again, just like a boss battle, when the initiative token reaches it, 
whatever it says here, this attack targets the strongest hero within range 1 of the commander, dealing X damage and poison X to it. Once again, X being the green ruin, because that's what it's on. And this one's on the bottom. The commander heals twice X. Health gain this way can exceed the starting maximum. Now that one I want to point out there. Monsters and heroes cannot exceed max health. Commanders can. They can increase maximum health. So this one can get really dangerous if you're not attacking him right off the bat. And then you've got activate this commander, then activate one more time if there are five or more ruins. And then, so not only are these on the track, but this guy is also on the track. So it's basically making the commander have his own turn, plus three more random little attacks, movements, changes. Um, and I really like this too, right? It, one, I feel like the old version rarely used the ruins on the initiative track. It always says, place the ruin on the initiative track after you draw it. And then, you know, maybe only four chapters out of all 18 chapters actually use the ruin track. This way, it's being used a lot more. Commanders are going to be used more. These are going to be used with the commander, so it actually matters which runes you are drawing out and changes how the game goes along. Once again, changing the, the replayability of it. So that is the commanders. The next thing I want to talk about is going to be loot. Now, this is what has been a lot of people are talking about on um, the difference, which is there. there is a huge difference in the loot, especially the, the level one, the equipment specifically. I'm going to talk about the equipment specifically first. Right. As you can see here, I have the equipment laid out. The ones on the left are the new level one equipment. The ones on the right are the old level one equipment. As you can see, there's a lot more, a ton more level one loot to be chosen, to be picked from, which I really like that. I really like that. I really had a hard time with having literally one choice, right? I had cloth armor, right? I had her and she had cloth armor. That means when I went to a loot, that's cloth armor was the only thing I could pick up, right? I had one choice of cloth armor. If I didn't like that cloth armor, I was, well, out of luck. Right now, there's two of everything, right? We have two plate armors. We have two leather armors. We have two cloth armors. We have two shields. We have two heavy, two light, two ranged, two implement weapons, two offhands, two relics, and then a bunch of trinkets instead of just four. Right? Yeah, we have eight trinkets instead of just four. So literally, there's twice as much now. But as people have noticed you get the reward twice. Meaning right before you would get a level one loot, you would draw it. Next time you would get or level one equipment, the next time you would get equipment was level two equipment, right? And every time you got new equipment, it was always from the new level. Now, from what I've noticed, I've kind of gone through it a little bit, but not in depth. So from what I've seen, you get two picks from the level two, level one before you go get level two equipment, which is sometimes it, I know a lot of people have said it, you know, it's not as exciting, right? Cause it was kind of exciting. You're like, Oh, we got equipment. Now it's level two. Oh, what's in the level two equipment, right? You're looking in there, trying to look at all the new stuff, right? It's all fun. Cause it's all new and different where this one is like, Oh, level one loot again. Well, I already know what there is, right? So it does lose a little bit of that excitement, right? That comes from the, rebuilding the new equipment or the new level. However, there were multiple times going through the first, the 1.0 version, the new old version, where we were like, oh yeah, we get a level five loot or level five equipment, right? So we pull it up and we go through it and nothing looked good. Like I, I literally, I ended the camp campaign on chapter six, 18 on our playthrough with a level one weapon. I didn't like any of the weapons after level one. Level one weapon was the one I liked and I never got one above that, right? 
So that in that sense, it was kind of lackluster in the fact of like, yeah, it was fun seeing it, but it, there wasn't a whole lot. I didn't feel like it got a lot better, you know. So I had like a level one weapon, a level five um, trinket, and then a level seven. Uh, what do you want to call it? offhand or whatever offhand or relic or whatever you have, right? So it wasn't like oh you're upgrading everything every time, which is why I think they also kind of went to this because now one you have two options here, right? You're like hey I want armor I have two options on that armor, and then next time you're like well I really like the armor but I really want one of those trinkets, right? So so now you're you're not forced to choose between the two. You could choose one now and you still can get the next one later, right? So there's a lot more options, but you do get a couple choices. So I do think that there's kind of ups and downs to both of those. Now, I want to kind of show you how much these have actually upgraded to real quick. Now, maybe not as much, not all of them, but a lot of them, right? So this is the old one, prevent three, retaliate two, right? So actually exactly the same there. But now you have an option to prevent five right off the bat. And then, same thing here. Um, actually, prevent three. So it actually went down. But now you also have a chance to curse one and prevent all but one damage. Right? This one, curse one, prevent two, and stealth. Curse one, prevent three, jump three, and stealth. So that one actually went up. And then, but you have a second option here. Um, you or target ally, prevent three. Now it's just prevent three, but he also can prevent four with the shield. Now this, I think the weapons are way better on this level one loot, right? This, whenever a roll 16 plus, the attack gains plus one damage. That's not bad. Or now you could get double axe, 16 plus, plus two damage or cleave. And then 16 plus is either shield two or intimidate two, All right? So that one's way better. Uh, same thing with the blood, blood rusted blade. Um, that 16 plus attack team bleed. Now it bleed two, poison one, and slow, or slow, or bleed two, then, or poison one and slow, or a shield two, or burn two, 16 plus. Right? So the attacks have actually, the weapons I feel have gotten way better than the old ones. I'm not going to go through all of them, but a lot, pretty much all of them are a lot better. Um, you can even see here. The old one, well, one was a plus one. Now the re precision is plus two right off the bat with level one equipment. However, they do not have one of these that the attack gains your choice of burn one or poison one. But I think it's okay. I feel like they took that away, but most of the weapons deal more or have more of those options. So it's not a trinket, but a lot of the weapons already have that ability in it. So I feel like that's all right. Um, the movements actually stayed the same, right? But they have added a lot more trinkets and options there. So that, that's kind of my quick rundown. Um, I did have my friend kind of go through the, the book real quick. We didn't go in depth. But one thing I wanted to point out is with the chapters, the old version, it was, you know, you got equipment, then you got a skill ability, then you got a class ability, then you got a equipment, skill, class, equipment, skill, class, equipment, skill, class. It was very boom, 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 boom. Easy, easy to predict what you're going to gain the next time. The new one starts off that way. Then after about chapter six or seven, it kind of starts bouncing around. So you don't get stuff in the same order or it's harder to expect, it seems like. But it still looked like you had two choices from the level one equipment. You're going to have two chances from the level two equipment. And then maybe only one from the level three equipment. One or two. We didn't, like I said, we didn't go through exactly. Meaning you will get at least one choice from the level three equipment in there. Not sure if you get a second one or not. However, with those, that different pacing is actually kind of fun because then you're, you don't, you're not expecting what to level up, right? It kind of changes the pace with that. So I appreciate that. Now, with the chest loot adventure deck, I'm not going to go too much in depth with that. They actually changed this deck greatly um, from the old version. 
before they had a lot of potions, which, I mean, there's still a lot of potions, but now they have a lot of scrolls, which actually are a separate attack, pretty much, which is usually pretty clutch. <laughs> um, if you watch any of my playthroughs or any other playthroughs, they're used quite a bit, actually. Um, there's a lot of scrolls that do extra damage. The one thing that they did did lose from the chest that I'm kind of sad about is that there was a lot more that affected your attack. Like there was one that said plus six to your next attack, plus six damage to your next attack. There was one that was a plus four to hit, plus two damage to your next attack. Those ones are kind of lost, which is kind of sad. But with all a lot of these scrolls that kind of do their own damage with, you know, burn four or three, da three damage at knockdown, those are actually pretty darn powerful. So, honestly, I'm kind of indecisive on how I feel about that. But I don't think it's a horrible change. But like I said, just not for sure exactly how I feel about that. Now, the Adventure deck also has a million of different cards. Those cards have a lot more going on. Um, here, there's only 13, but I'm pretty sure there's not like 20 or 30 in the final print. The main difference with the adventure deck is now both in the adventure deck and the chest, you could get these cosmetic or cosmic gemstone. What you do is basically this cosmetic gemstone and some of your weapons or equipment, you can basically insert this gemstone into it to upgrade it. So as it says, place the gemstone on a second socketed item, flip back the item card and use its backside permanently. So basically, you discard this card. If you have this Bloody Axe that you got from the Adventure deck, where it says Bloody Axe, Light Weapon, or Heavy Weapon, and then in Princess it says Socketed, meaning it has that socket for a gemstone. So it's got a front. It says right there above the three damage it's front. And your attack against enemies with bleed deals double damage. Well, now you discard that gemstone. Basically, put that gemstone in that Bloody Axe, and you flip it over. Now, your attack does four, and your attack with against enemies still. So it still do, does the same thing, but now instead of three damage, now your permanent attack is four. Like, that's your base attack is four. And it's still a seven plus to hit, which is amazing, right? So that's one thing. Another thing that they have done with this is sometimes there's a flip ability. So this one also has front and back, but as you can see, there's no socketed underneath the light weapon or implement weapon, meaning it doesn't have a socket for gemstone. However, in the description it says, when you roll 16+, plus, the attack gains push 3. Additionally, for each space the target was moved, it takes 3 non-preventable damage. Flip this card over. So once you roll that 16+, plus, you're going to flip this card over. Now, as a minor action, you may discard a focus token to flip this card back over. So this has a flip ability. So instead of that just being a normal ability it always has, it flips when that ability activates, and you have to then spend a focus token to flip it back over to use it. So there's a flip one and a socketed one that flip. But the socketed one, you use it permanently. This one, you just flip over when it tells you to do it, whatever it says. One thing I want to note as well with the weapons is a lot of the weapons before were plus eight to hit. Like that was the normal plus eight or nine to hit. Now all the weapons are all plus seven. How, unless there are some that do a little bit more damage. Like this one is a plus eight because it does a little bit more. Right, some of them are plus eight just because they're a little bit more intense. However, majority of them are now plus seven. Now what I wanted to show you is the doors. This is the exact same door. I've blocked it out so there's no spoilers. You can't see what door this is or anything it says. However, you can see, right, this is the exact same door. It does look pretty similar in the setup. However, it's got one gray monster rookie, one white monster rookie, and one chest token for level one. This one has a one skeleton archer, one rotten flesh for... The setup. So right there, it's already basically making you have a gray monster. So this one's pretty similar, actually. As you can see, this one's actually not 
two different. However, then you come to this door. As you can see, this is the same door, the exact same chapter, the exact same door right here. Meaning, as you can see, this one has a, com the new one has a commander. The old one was not a commander and it was not a small room, <laughs> right? So you can kind of see how, quite a bit difference here. Once again, going again, exact same chapter, exact same room looks completely different, completely different, right? The, it used to be all rookies. Now it's all fighters already, wherever this is. I mean, it went from rookie to fighter right off the bat, right? Meaning, even if you played the old one, if you watch playthroughs of the old one, the story itself and how it's set up are not true spoilers because it is so different. Um, the, I, I believe the overarching story is still about the same, but everything in between is totally different. Um, I mean, there's people that complain about, you know, the the app that reads it to you. You can't use it using the old book because it's that different. Like, it's completely different, which I think is awesome for people who've played it before. Like, it's like getting a totally new game with this, which is awesome. I really, really appreciate that. Now, we're going to come to the pets. Now, the pets, they've basically been weakened, actually, uh, which is kind of sad. I mean, as you can see, you know, so this is the old, this is the new. Used to do two damage and bleed one. Now he only does one damage and bleed one. Used to do one damage, one damage, so the damage didn't change there. But now he has Intimidate instead of recovering one AC. The bear did two damage and bleed and slow, and now he just does two and shield two. The dog used to do two, and now he only does one. He does have protect, which is basically making them attack him, so he's more of like a guard dog. Right? The dragon used to be one and bleed two, now he's just one and burn one. Um, he's actually pretty much the same, the ice spirit. Um, but more, pretty much... They've all just kind of got weakened a little bit, which is kind of sad because um, just feels like they don't do as much. So it's, I felt like with playing with them, with the new ones, it's hard to have that motivation to spawn them and use them just because they don't feel like they're doing as much. Um, but they still do quite a bit. I'm not saying, I'm not saying they're horrible, but it is just kind of sad seeing the difference. I think it would have it, been better if I didn't know the old one and just saw the new ones. Um, but knowing that they kind of got weakened is kind of sad for me at least. All right, now we're going to go just through some rules difference. Um, there's not a whole lot of rules difference. Um, the few clarification to the rules. So the first rule is these guys. They are non-preventable damage now. You used to be able to block for them if you get the poison or anything, but now you cannot block. They are non-preventable. If you have it, you take the damage and you keep on going. The next one that they have changed quite a bit is stealth. Before stealth was you had it, made it so the enemies couldn't see you, so you didn't get attacked. Now they've added that if you're self in stealth and you attack, you lose the stealth, but now you gain double damage to that attack, right? It's kind of like a sneak attack. So that's kind of cool. However, stealth does go away at the beginning of your turn. Which makes it a little bit harder to do that sneak attack, but I mean it is double damage, so I mean sneak attack can be super super powerful. But you have to have an ability that gives you stealth on your first ability, and then so your second ability you could use that stealth attack. But I still, I really like that. Kind of makes it fun, you know, having that stealth sneaky attack on there. Now, another rule that I'm really glad they changed is the darkness. How darkness is now treated. So before, you know, if you were on or near it, you had a minus two hit. If the, if the enemies were on or adjacent to it, they would get a plus one to their damage. Now, it is only if you are on top or the enemies are on top of it, do they get a bonus. The negative bonus to us is, or to the heroes is a 
still a minus 2D hit. So that stays the same. It's just you have to be on top. However, the he the enemies now get a plus two damage, but it has to be when they're on top of it, so it might not happen as much. But they are going to try to step on it, obviously, right? That they're gonna if they can, they're gonna step on darkness, so they get that plus two damage. But now it is only when you're on top, rather than on top and or adjacent to. Another clarification that they have done is. Darkness will break down into three separate darkness tiles for a few reasons. One, if you draw this one right, there is nowhere that this thing can be placed. So it, it will break down and go where to the nearest strongest hero. I agree with that. I think that's good. The one that I have a harder time with is in the rule that says... If the certain tile that was drawn cannot reach the hero, like this one, right? If we drew this little L, it can be placed there, right? It fits, but it does not get the hero. But it could if it was three separate ones. That means you will discard that and place the three individual ones so it will get your hero. I have a hard time with that rule. Um, I understand it, right? It's trying to make the darkness a little bit more dangerous, right? That it's more likely going to hit you. But I feel like it takes away from this Tetrisy part of it, right? Like, I think it's kind of fun where you've got all these weird shapes going all over the board, right? It's just like the darkness is just having this weird crawling all over the place. Where I feel like, you know, eight to nine times out of ten, you're going to break one of these down so you can get the hero. So I feel like it really just kind of takes out this whole Tetris type of feel to it. And, you know, placing it, having it just be all this random place that you have to kind of dance around where it just kind of gets you. So it's just going to fill the board easily. Once again, I understand that concept, right? They're trying to make the darkness a little bit more pushy. They're trying to make it feel like it's doing more to really push you further into the dungeon or the crawl or whatever, right? But, yeah, I understand what why they did it. I understand that. Personally, not a big fan of that rule. Um, I like using the different shapes, having it fit differently, right? Luck out if we do that, right? But now I'm trapped, so I'm going to have to move through it, so I'm still going to take damage next turn. But, you know, it's still just that kind of the aspect of, of using the shapes. Like, if we have shape, why not use the shapes? But... So that is a rule that I think that was more of a clarification rule. I don't think that necessarily changed, but that was a clarification to say, hey, that's what they meant for the darkness to act. And just like the conditions, damage from darkness is non-preventable as well. That means you will take the damage no matter what. There are some abilities out there that cancel your or that negate the, the damage that still negates the damage, right? So just because it's not preventable doesn't mean that those don't work. Those still work. If you have an ability that says don't take damage from darkness, you don't take dark damage from darkness. However, if all heroes are on darkness and darkness is to be spawned again and everyone's on darkness, everyone will take crush damage. Crush damage is not the same as the darkness damage, meaning... Even if you are, even if you don't take damage from darkness when you normally walk on it, you will take this crush damage. Now, this is a question I don't have, and maybe some of you guys can answer me um, in the comments below. So it says you can only take darkness, damage from darkness once a turn, right? Meaning, if. If I'm right here and I get damn this darkness put on me for the first one, so I take two damage, but now everyone is on darkness, so I, for my second one, I'm going to take crush damage. Now, is that damage? Because it's not darkness damage, right? Because the rules do say the crush damage is not avoidable by those special abilities that... Even if you don't take darkness 
damage from darkness, you will take that. You will still take that crush damage. Since that's kind of different damage, will Maya get hurt from two from being from the first one, and then two again because it's crush damage, not darkness damage. I think that they don't take damage, right? Or else if you're playing one, every time you, if you're playing the true solo, every time you draw two, you're going to basically be getting hit for damage. So I don't think it's like that, but I'm wondering what you guys think if, what your guys' thoughts on that are. One other change that they did is for retaliate abilities. I don't think either one of these guys have a, a retaliate. No, they, they do not. But retaliate damage, before you could just use it whenever, but now you have to be within range. Meaning Maya has to use a, or sorry, doesn't have to be in range. Has to be within the targeted enemies. Right, so, meaning if Lorelei is here, and the Shadow Cult is attacking Maya, Lorelei can use a prevent to help Maya prevent. Lorelei cannot use a retaliate to retaliate against the Shadow Cultist because the Shadow Cultist is not directly attacking Lorelei. If that makes sense. So that, and I guess that's a new thing as well with that retaliate, that you have to be within the targeted heroes to actually retaliate back to that enemy. Which kind of makes sense. I agree with that. That seems more thematically correct as well. All right, you can't really retaliate if you weren't getting attacked, right? One other thing that I wanted to note that I noticed, um, I've only played the first like five chapters of the new one, so don't quote me on this. However, I remember the old one had different darkness spawning rules for a lot of the chapters, right? Like even the first five or six chapters, had like three or four different ways of how darkness was spawned, right? Whether it came from the Shadow Cultists, whether it came from different abilities going on around on the board, whether it came from random things, right? There was, I feel like it was always, it was not always different, but it was different a lot of the times. Even within the first five or six, I noticed there was two or three different ways that darkness was spawning. The first five levels, first five chapters of the new one, they were all exactly the same. The darkness spawning rules never changed. They were always just the standard. I don't know if that continues on. Maybe somebody who's played a little bit more of the new version can tell me. But I, I'm hoping that it... Because I really like that variety, right? I like that the darkness was spawning differently every time. I hope that it changes. I hope that it's different. Um, let me know as you guys go through it if it is different or how, what you guys think of that. I'm hoping that it does variety because I really like that variety of how they spawn. Hopefully it kind of continues on that way as well. Okay. Well, I think that is all the differences that I have found so far and that I have done my homework on, I guess. If I missed anything, please let me know. Please put it down in the comments below. Um, if you don't agree with something I said, please let me know. You know, if I made a mistake or something. This is just kind of me looking at it. Like I said at the first, I have not, I myself don't have the full new printed copy with me. All I have is this, the pre, the print and play that came out during the campaign. However, I wanted to kind of go through because a lot of people had questions. So let me know, you know, if I miss something or if someone that has the game is like, oh, no, you're wrong. It's actually not like that on this game or on the full final printed version. You know, let me know. Let me know what, what you guys think. If you like these changes, if you don't like these changes, excited for them, not excited. Um, I think overall, I really, really like the changes. Um, yeah, just let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.